Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in this video I'm going to cover on how you can master upload files of knowledge in Copilot Studio. I'll also show you how to use this group files functionality which is now available to better streamline the generative answer results. And I'll also answer the questions which either you or your company has been answering about hey when is the best time to go down this path of uploading knowledges versus when you should not. So stick around, this is very, very important. But first, here's my intro video. So you know, there is some truth behind the statement that your agent is only as good as your knowledge. Because let's face it, we've got all the generative system and orchestration in the back end but if you're pointing it to a very specific set of knowledge, well, then that knowledge is very important. So in this video, I want to show you specifically how your upload files can be such a powerful source of that knowledge. So let me give you a quick update on what this knowledge is. Right over here in the custom Copilot Studio, or now it's called as Copilot Studio Full, when you're building this custom agent, there is a whole tab dedicated to knowledge. When I click on it, you have this first option to add knowledge. And when I click on that one, these are all the options available. You can go ahead and see the featured ones. You can go and click on the advanced. You can just do all the magic right over here. But for this video, the one I want to focus on and its option is available right over here. It says select to browse or upload and sync from. So when I click on it, you now see the option for me to upload knowledge, basically files that I have, which I want the agent to use as upload. Now, before you go and do any of this, there is one prerequisite that people tend to forget because it's happening automatically behind the scenes. But I do want to cover that because in this video, I want you to master this whole process. So let me show you that, all right? Because one of the most important requirements is to make sure that the Dataverse functionality is turned on. And here it is. I go to my PPAC, which stands for Power Platform Admin Center. I'm specifically picking that environment where I'm going to create this agent where I'm uploading my knowledge. Click on that one. Then you go to the settings. In your settings, you go to products, you click on features, and right over here on the top, there's something called as Dataverse Search. This is the absolute requirement, the prerequisite that you need for everything that I'm going to show you moving forward. Now, the neat thing is by default, it is turned on, especially if you're spinning up new environments for Copilot Studio, this is by default turned on, which means you also understood what the other requirement is, that this environment needs to have the Dataverse functionality. So this is that big requirement, right? Dataverse search has to be turned on. And so now you know where to check because for some reason, you notice that your agent is just not performing well and it is not referring to the knowledge that you uploaded stop what you're doing, come and verify this because for some reason, somebody may have turned this off and you gotta go ahead and turn this on, all right? This is the biggest prerequisite. All right, so let's go back over here because I wanna show you an example. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and now select the browse. Um, I'm gonna actually go and grab some other ones over here. I have this gold one. I'm gonna select these two and click over here and now I'm gonna go and click on open. This is where the group files functionality comes up. Now, this is currently in preview but I still wanted to show you because you understand the importance of it. And I personally cannot wait till this thing goes GA. So all you have to do is you have to toggle this on. But the biggest catch is that you only see this option when you are uploading it, or at least after you've done uploading it. So let's take a look over here because this almost looks like you are going ahead and creating a mini agent by itself. And there is some truth behind that because the beauty of this file groups is that it actually goes ahead and takes this group as your own agent by itself. All right, so let me go and walk you through these settings. All right, so this name over here, I'm gonna keep it consistent. I've already got two other file groups created. They're called as Benefits Silver Level, Benefits Bronze Level. I'm gonna name this one to Benefits Gold Level. Now, the description came automatically by the documents that I've uploaded, so I'm gonna leave that as is, but the instructions, this is where I need to be very specific. So I went and copied the ones I already used for the two of these, but I'm gonna tweak it. What I've stated over here is information boundaries. Use only grounded data sources for, and I copied it from the silver one. I'm gonna go and change this to for gold level 
benefits. I'm also going to say do not provide cost related information for and I'm going to change that to from gold to silver. So I'm going to reread that. Say, do not provide cost related information. Example, silver or gold level benefits, premiums, deductibles, copays, blah, 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 etc. I'm also putting in the same focus over here. And these are the due documents. So you kind of understand what it is like this is literally behaving like a mini agent process all it is because what the beauty over here is that now anytime somebody mentions the term gold level or gold it will go ahead and skip these two knowledges and it'll directly drill down to only these ones so it's very very important that you go ahead and put good instructions over here and this is the key for the performance increase because now it's skipping all the other knowledges and it's going to go straight over here I'll talk more about the benefits later, but I just wanted to give you that little snippet since I was doing it. So I'm going to go and add it to the agent. It says uploading your files. Please do not close the browser video because this is where it goes ahead and uploads it directly to the dataverse. The dataverse that you and I made sure that the actual search is turned on. It went ahead and created the other folder and it's going to go ahead and now start processing or indexing directly these files. And that, in my opinion, is one of the strongest points of uploading the document over here. Because every single time you do that, it directly goes ahead and indexes, or you can also say queries. So it knows all the knowledge that is available right over here. And I like to compare this with, say, SharePoint, because even SharePoint is a really strong content management system. But over there, you have to be dependent on that. When you go ahead and upload a file into SharePoint, usually every 15 minutes or so, it will go ahead and start indexing the documents. Now, in the agent side, we can't control that. We have to be dependent on SharePoint to do it. And I get it, 15 minutes is nothing. Like 15 minutes can happen that fast. So it is strong. SharePoint's content management is really strong. In this case, in Dataverse, we have full control over it. And why? Because it happens immediately when the document gets uploaded. This to me is one of the biggest benefits of doing it down this way is uploading that document directly into your agent in this manner. Now, I told you about the good side. There is something which is not bad, but there's something that you will understand very quickly is that this indexing, I can't seem to figure out how fast or slow it goes. Yes, there is some dependency on the size of the file or how many files you uploaded. But from time to time, I have noticed that the indexing will go really fast. Sometimes it goes a little slow. Overall, I am seeing this improving drastically by leaps and bounds as this whole Copilot Studio improves. But that's the one thing that I have no control over. Sometimes it'll be too fast, too slow, overall negligible. This is really awesome. All right, so let's come back over here, okay, outside. We still have to wait for this indexing to go through. But now when I go outside, you see that overall, I have now three different groups. There's one for just the gold documents, there's the other for the silver, and then there's the other for the bronze. And what's neat is for each and every one of them, you've given specific instructions and that is what the agent will do. You do not need to add any specific instructions for each of the three groups. Maybe over here, all you say is that, hey, go ahead and refer to these instructions and that's it. Because each of those other instruction groups are very specific to their own instruction set. Treating it from the side, I absolutely love how this functionality works. All right, so now that you understand this concept of knowledge and where I can go and upload it in groups, let me actually walk you through this agent and its scenarios because this will help you understand what is a good time to actually upload files and not. So in this example, I've actually built a benefits enrollment agent. And this is the scenario where in your company, either on an annual or semi-annual basis, people have the option to go ahead and re-enroll for the benefits. That could be a med medical, dental, stuff like that, all right? The neat thing about that is that your human resource department has done all the prep work prior to that. They've got all the documentations and everything ready. And more than likely, those documentations went and got uploaded to your SharePoint or Confluence, which means everybody in your company already has access to those documents. So in that case, securing those documents is not a problem because as it is, people already have access to it. And hence, this is the perfect scenario to do this, where you go ahead and upload those documents as knowledge directly in the agent, so your performance and everything works really fast. And that's exactly what I did. I created this agent purely to answer any benefits related questions for the upcoming year. I went and created the agent, gave some instructions over here in detail, and now I went ahead and added knowledge. Now, in my company scenario, I've actually got 
three different levels of knowledge and for each of them also there is sub levels whether if you are just a single person or if you're a couple or if you're a family like all of those differences fall under and hence this is a perfect scenario for creating these groups because one of the most powerful functionality is that if you've created these groups and you've added good instructions that when an agent is actually asked the questions it immediately knows, hey, for anything that has to do with goal related questions, skip everything else and jump straight into this little group over here. Because over here, I specifically told the agent that use only grounded data sources for gold level benefits. And each of these benefits are described in these documents, which have already been indexed. So performance increases really fast for this scenario because all the knowledge is now drilled down to a specific category or type or reason. If I did not do this, all right, say in the scenario that I actually did not create these groups, I've got all of those files listed over here, then you know what the agent has to do? It has to search through all of those files one by one and then go ahead and retrieve the answer for you. So you understand how powerful this functionality is? not just from a performance standpoint, but also to go ahead and get very specific answer that your end user asked for this agent. This is the biggest reason why I would encourage you to do that because not only is your content already available, but now you can drill down to a very specific topic. This is one of the biggest reason to go down this path of using groups. And because in this agent, I went ahead and added specific instructions for each of these groups, I didn't even have to go down the path of creating specific topics for each of them. No, in fact, you see, these are the out of the box four and the out of the box nine. Why? Because each of those groups over there have their own set of instructions. So the agent knows exactly where to go. So you see, it's getting more and more attractive to this idea of not only just uploading knowledge, but also going down this group's path. Now, to do this as a fair assessment, I have to talk about both the pros and the cons. So first, Let's talk about the pros because there is a lot of them. And one of them I already covered is that your documents or your knowledge immediately get indexed. So you don't have to wait for it or you don't have to anticipate. It happens immediately. And yes, the documents can take a while to go out and get indexed, but you can see it happen because when you go and upload a document, yes, it will show in progress, but you also know when it is ready unlike other content management systems where you just have to wait and hope that maybe it is done. Not in this case, you know exactly when it is ready. All right, so that's the first and the most important one. Second is the file types. And here's a full documentation on it. These are the supported document types that you can upload directly into knowledge now. And you see there's quite a lot of them. And it's not just things such as Word and Excel. No, you can go ahead and upload your XML files JSON, YAML, like these options are also available, which is really powerful. Also, also, it will accept annotated image support. And this first line explains the whole thing. It says annotated images embedded in PDF files are also supported. So here's an example of an image which is explaining what are the stages in a sales funnel. And you can see the image actually explains that. So if you just went and uploaded the PDF file that has this image, the agent will reference this knowledge as well and provide that as a generative answer. Makes sense because it's very important for you to understand that yes, images work, but currently these are annotated images embedded in PDF files. So you can see there is definitely a lot of document types that is uploaded and that's definitely a pro thing. And last, which is another big one, is the less consumption of credits. And let me explain that to you from this billing rate documentation. When we go ahead and upload the documents as knowledge and we go and ask an agent, it has to go ahead and generate the answers directly. But hey, in this case, but in this case, your knowledge is already there inside the agent. So the generative answers only goes and consumes two copilot credits. But if your document was say in SharePoint or another data source, then that requires us to go and pull this grounded information from another data source and that will require 10 co-pilot credits for each and every call that you make. See the difference? It is five times. And all of this can add up pretty fast as well. So all of you who are in the management and the director level, this should definitely be very attractive to you. And I wanna end with the concept of how it will even take unstructured type of data and still do a good job pulling that information. And just as a quick overview, 
structured could be like an Excel spreadsheet with some tables over there. Unstructured could literally be an entire essay or a documentation. And yes, it has some terms in it, but the whole documentation is not very structured and therefore it falls under the unstructured category. Even that is good enough. So you see, there are a lot of pros over here, but I also want to talk about these two cons. The first one is management of this knowledge. Now see the example that I gave for the benefits. This is literally something that you would have to update maybe once or twice a year, depending on how many times your benefits is. If your benefits enrollment is open only once a year, then this knowledge has to only be updated once a year. If it's a benefits enrollment twice a year, then this knowledge has to be uploaded only twice a year. So this is a great scenario. However, when the time comes to upload it, it is the maker. The maker of this agent is the one who has access and you literally have to come in over here. You have to delete it and then go ahead and update the newest knowledge. This is a manual process and to do that, you need to have that maker level access. There is no way around that. And the second thing is a question that I get asked about all the time and it does alarm people and that is, when you go ahead and give somebody access to this agent, they also have access to this PDF documentation. And believe it or not, this is the main division that I have seen. Because there's one set of people that say, Daniel, that kind of makes sense, right? Because you've already given people access to this agent. The documents over here are already something that is in the HR system, SharePoint side or their Confluence side. So why are people so concerned about that? But there's another set of people who are saying that I don't want the users to have access to all the knowledge. I just want them to get information that applies only to them. Let the agent handle the filtering part of it. It is a valid point, right? And there's people who think that way as well. Now for everybody, whether on one side or the other side, this will allow people to have access to the agent. In fact, when you're asking questions to the agent and the agent responds back, it will actually show you citation. And in that citation, there will be links to this PDF file, which you could go ahead and download. So keep that in mind, all right? For this type of scenario, everybody has access to that knowledge. And depending on which side you are in, this is something that may or may not work for you. So I do wanna end this technical part on a positive note and talking about some neat features that come along with this. First of all, that group that I showed you, you can go ahead and create up to 25 groups. That's just not 25 files in a group, no, 25 groups. You can create that many of them. And in each group, you can go and add up to 500 files where each file can be up to 512 megabytes. So if you quickly do the math, this 25 files versus the 500, you can literally go and put 12,500 files in one agent. And that is a lot. And if you don't like the file groups, that's fine. It is possible to go and ungroup that file group as well. You just gotta be careful that the total number of knowledge sources is 500 or less. So hopefully this video gives either you as a technical team or your management team all the answers that you need about when this upload files is the best path to go and what is the good that comes along with it. Sure, there were a few cons that I went and explained it, but there's so much good that comes out of it as long as your criteria is well suited for this. Hopefully this video was useful to you and as always, keep using Copilot Studio. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.